McCoy in Loop 96 here tonight. AW Dynamite Blood and Guts for the first time ever. History will be made, of course. Blood and Guts going to be very similar to WWE's NXT War Games. However, WWE owning everything that was owned by the WCW back in the day. Of course, Dusty Rhodes creating this match. Cody Rhodes not in the WWE anymore, of course. A head honcho in all elite wrestling. This will be AEW's version of of war games blood and guts first time ever was mentioned we're supposed to have it last march actually it was supposed to be the inner circle versus the elite however covid 19 happened now take a trip around the sun a little over a year later here we are cinco de mayo may the 5th 2021 inner circle pinnacle in the very first ever aw blood and guts match so these are, in fact, my AW Dynamite Blood and Guts live reactions, play a play, live watch along reaction stream, live right here on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in and listening audio only this evening. Running a little bit behind, so we're going to pick up the action with the start of the first ever Blood and Guts match that is coming up next with the Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle, of course, Chris Jericho and MJF leading the way. But before we get into that, be sure, as always, to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. The links in the description below with that thumbs up button. Share hashtag AEW, hashtag AEW Dynamite, hashtag Blood and Guts. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers, always greatly appreciated. As well, we are going to recap what has happened in the first hour or so of the event so far tonight before we get into Blood and Guts here in a second as well. So to kick off the show, we had a tag team match with the AW World Heavyweight Champion and Kenny Omega as he teamed with Michael Nakazawa to take on John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Moxley and Kingston picked up the win after Omega left Nakazawa by himself. However, post-match, the Elite, Too Sweet Me, minus Hangman Adam Page, who wasn't featured tonight in the opening contest or in this first hour of the show for some unknown reason. We'll see what's up with that moving forward. But the Elite post-match with Kenny Omega, the Good Brothers, Gallows and Anderson, and the Young Bucks, they continued to attack both John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. And then we found out that the doctor herself, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, will be getting an AEW Women's World Heavyweight Championship match at Double or Nothing on May the 30th, taking on Sheeta as Sheeta will defend her Women's Championship against Britt Baker. Thank you. Then we had a singles match with QT Marshall of the Factory, of course. Used to be with Cody Rhodes and the Nightmare Family, but has since left. So QT Marshall versus Cody Rhodes in a singles match. Here just a little bit ago on AEW Dynamite, this blood and guts edition, a few weeks away from Double or Nothing, as mentioned. I'm sure we're going to have a, a Crossroads Dynamite the Wednesday before. We'll have to see, but uh, Double or Nothing fast approaching as we'll hit the summer, and then we'll see what their schedule is, of course, uh, with a potential Fighter Fest or Fight for the Fallen, as they've done the past few years, on the road to All Out then Labor Day weekend. Along with uh, all these wrestling promotions getting back on the road, actually touring with live fans in the stands. But QT Marshall, Cody Rhodes in the singles match. QT actually hit the crossroads on Cody about halfway through, but Cody ended up picking up the win. So Cody Rhodes won by submission. We then had, of course, with, as mentioned, QT Marshall now distancing himself even further from the Nightmare Family. Of course, this is the current story. I'm sure they're going to have a match at the pay-per-view coming up once again. Um, or maybe, hey, since, as I've thought, okay, Inner Circle Pinnacle in a stadium stampede match, but then we get this of blood and guts, well, still maybe Inner Circle Pinnacle at Stadium Stampede, depending on what happens here coming up shortly. But maybe we get the Nightmare Family versus the Factory in a stadium stampede match at the end of the month. Only time's going to tell, but post-match of this match as well, um, Anthony Agogo, who is a former Olympian, who really hasn't wrestled a whole lot on Dynamite. And I know they, of course, have AW Dark and AW Dark Elevation now as well, which I really don't watch. So, um, you know, talents on both of those shows, Monday, Tuesdays, and then, you know, Wednesdays for Dynamite too. But uh, he came out and can continue to attack Cody Rhodes as well. So, 
Um, both winners in these two opening contests um, ended up getting beat down post-match uh, for the losers or the losers faction, their group, to stand tall then to get more heel heat, which makes sense moving forward, of course, to continue the feud. Um, so first half hour, 45 minutes or so of the show, actually pretty damn good. Um, but then we went to a interview with Alex Marvez, uh, who was interviewing uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky as they're sort of uh, in the mix for this TNT championship, the TNT title that Darby Allen uh, is still currently holding. Uh, we'll get into with what happened just actually seconds ago with Miro also being interviewed and then um, entering his name into the hat for that TNT title as well here in a second. But uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, they threw Darby Allen down a set of stairs, long story short. Uh, so we'll have to see if they, because these big pay-per-views, the big two at least, with Double or Nothing and All Out, they normally like to have, say, a Casino Battle Royale for a number one contendership spot for a championship, whether it be the main title, the TNT title, uh, or a tag team championship opportunity at some point down the line as well. Women's side of things too, uh, with them finally figuring out for the most part just hey little by little but um they're finally putting Britt baker in uh that spot as mentioned and hopefully she'll win the title uh and then that'll boost the women's division for AEW. but um you know we could see a ladder match for this tnt title i'm thinking uh come double or nothing with everyone that's been vying for this championship as of late but um yeah long story short darby allen got thrown down a set of stairs um, and then, uh, after we heard the announcement that Britt Baker's challenging Sheeta for that AW Women's Championship at Double or Nothing, uh, she had a jobber match defeating Julia Hart, not of the Hart family. Don't want to get mix anybody up, confuse anyone by any means, but uh, Britt Baker pick up the win. A fatal four way tag team match, a title eliminator match actually, was next. Uh, which featured SCU, the acclaimed Jurassic Express, and the Varsity Blondes. Winner to receive a AEW World Tag Team title opportunity down the line. That match will now take place next week, so they say. It'll be SCU versus the Young Bucks after SCU defeated the acclaimed Jurassic Express and the Varsity Blondes in this Fatal 4-Way tag team match. So, SCU winners... They'll challenge the Bucks next week for those tag team titles. John Moxley is also going to defend the IWGP United States Championship next week on Dynamite as well. We then had Kenny Omega's big announcement for the Double or Nothing pay-per-view, which he'll defend his AW World Heavyweight Championship at. Uh, Tony Schiavone interviewed Omega, cut a promo. Uh, Schiavone, hey, next week it'll be Pac and Orange Cassidy winner to face you for this world championship at double or nothing um Pac never came out orange cassidy did to a huge pop um i would think orange cassidy's gonna win challenge omega then for the title of course omega's gonna retain though uh when it's all said and done kenny omega's currently holding like ten thousand title belts as it is so i mean it really wouldn't be bad for him to lose a title i mean even though he just picked up the Impact Championship a few weeks ago, but he's not going to be losing this AEW World Heavyweight Championship anytime soon. Regardless if it's Tupac or Orange Cassidy, he's still going to come out victorious uh, here in a few weeks. Uh, so they had that segment, uh, and this just within minutes ago, Omega, but then after this got done, um, as Michael Nakazawa was standing by Omega the whole entire time holding those other championship titles as well, um, we had Miro come out, and he was interviewed by Tony Schiavone as well. Uh, Miro, hey, basically next week, Darby Allen, you know, don't forfeit your title, but I want you for this TNT championship uh, at some point in time. He's coming for the TNT title that Darby Allen as mentioned, is still currently 
holding. So, um, you know, on the road to double or nothing, blood and guts about to kick off here in a few seconds, as mentioned. Um, pretty damn good uh, AW wrestling as of late, I've thought. Um, of course, by themselves now on Wednesday nights after winning the so-called, in quotes, Wednesday Night War that us fans dubbed up against WWE NXT. But, um, yeah, pretty good uh, hour just tonight in the build-up to the main event for uh, Blood and Guts that seems to be going to be taking place the rest of the show. So about an hour worth of uh, Blood and Guts, but then... Uh, We'll have Double or Nothing here in a few weeks. Uh, in the middle, though, the next WWE pay-per-view, WWE WrestleMania Backlash. I'll also have live reactions play, play live right here on YouTube on May the 16th, so be sure to tune in for those. And uh, once more, thanks for tuning in and listening. Be sure, as always, to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below, the thumbs up button. Share hashtag blood and guts. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers, and uh, let's get into it. AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle. AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle. Blood and Guts, two rings, one cage. This is the main event. This is Blood and Guts. Hashtag blood and guts when you share. Seems like a sold out crowd. Blood and guts will begin with one member from each team for a five minute period. After the five minutes have expired, one member of the pinnacle will enter. So they'll have an advantage first, giving them a two on one advantage. Each team will then alternate. Once all 10 men have entered the cage, the Blood and Guts match will officially begin, so we're always away from that. The only way to win is to make your opponent submit or surrender. Submit or surrender for the finish. And now here comes the pinnacle, led by Maxwell Jacob Friedman, otherwise known, of course, as MJF. One of the best, if not the best, heel in all professional wrestling right now. As he kisses his dynamite diamond on his pinky finger, they'll walk towards the side as there's steps coming down the ramp. As, of course, they had to build another ring. As he actually shoves a fan front row, walking ringside, about to enter this blood and guts match. They're actually going to fade to black and take a commercial break. So, commercial break uh, before we get into with uh, what's about to happen, take place here momentarily with uh, the first ever AW Dynamite Blood and Guts match, Pinnacle and Inner Circle. I would have to assume that, um, you know, with... MJF and Jericho leading the way that both men in that regard, they'll enter last. Um, we'll see who, of course, you know, starts these matches, but or just this match in general. Uh, you know, it's a 5 on 5 Tully Blanchard's going to be ringside because he's the Pinnacle's manager, I guess you could say, as, uh, of course, they uh, tied the loop up with... Uh, FTR and Sean Spears as he was managing both of them and then of course MJF turns on Jericho in the inner circle forms his own group in the pinnacle so hence this blood and guts match tonight and as mentioned you know who knows we'll see if we get a um, stadium stampede with these two as well moving forward at double or nothing or not and if not I mean the other match they could potentially have you know there if they're even going to have that this year that I'm currently thinking about is as mentioned earlier the uh, Nightmare Family in the Factory with Cody Rhodes and uh, QT Marshall. But um, AEW Dynamite here on uh, TNT with blood and guts about to return from a commercial break here, hopefully in a few seconds. But um, yeah, it'll be the Pinnacle and the Inner Circle. Uh, but uh, yeah, they had to build an extra ring, of course. It's two rings and one big cage. Um, so. 
here we go we're back from uh, break and with the pinnacle already out here come the inner circle they have the blood and guts logo in a 3d position as WWE has done for their prestigious events as of late but Jericho with Sammy Guevara, Santana Ortiz, and Jake Hager in what seemed to be uh, prison suits. They're going to war. They're back in black. It's blood and guts. They got some prison black jumpsuits on, it looks like. Yeah, they got uh, names of different uh, penitentiaries on the back of their jumpsuits, which is pretty cool. So... Um, Judas, of course, by Fozzy. Jericho's theme. Inner Circle's theme as well. Yeah, Daly's Place in Jacksonville looks sold out right now. As full to the brim as they could pack it in, social distance and all that. Uh, this has to be the most fans for a pro wrestling event uh, since the pandemic happened. Uh, but um, your demo god, the champion, Chris Jericho, taking on the salt of the earth, MJF, as it will be the inner circle and pinnacle in the first ever AEW blood and guts match here as uh, they're now both ringside I'm sure the bell's gonna ring once and then whoever starts the match of course will of course begin the match at that point but then the bell's not officially gonna ring uh, until as mentioned all 10 members of uh, both these teams are in fact uh in and legal so they sing Judas twice and uh, we're live live on TNT AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts Sammy Guevara is going to go first alright it will be Sammy Guevara of the inner circle taking on what looks to be Dax Harwood of FTR Dax and Cash of course FTR what we known as the Revival F the Rest we also have Sean Spears and his blonde mohawk here in the year 2021 go back a few weeks ago that promo Jericho cut I mean this feud with Sammy going right after Dax leaping over the middle rope separating both of these rings so we got what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides and a uh, normal, of course, with two rings, eight-sided ring, but it's blood and guts. It's AEW's version of War Games, as mentioned. So, shorter tackle there off the ropes. Sammy doing a lot of uh, backflips, and there's a drop kick, taking out Dax. Nice right hand. We also have Wardlow, of course. Nice spine buster there by Dax. Looks to be bleeding already for some of the nerves. And he wants a pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But there's no refs in the ring. There's a cameraman there, of course. But referees are stationed ringside. And there's no pinfalls or submissions. Um, you have to... Uh, well, there is a submission. Back check on that. The only way to win... Nice chop uh, across the chest there as they zoom in on the camera in the corner. Um, the only way to win is to make your opponent submit or surrender. But this match technically isn't uh, official yet. It hasn't, even though it started, it hasn't started, if that makes any sense, because it doesn't start until all 10 members uh, are, in fact, legal uh, in the ring. So uh, Dax and Guevara, one, two, three, four. They're doing uh, what seems to be. Three to five uh, headbutts from Guevara to Dax Harwood uh, into the turnbuckles from top to bottom. And then a drop kick from Sammy once more as he looks ringside, points to the pinnacle, points to MJF, flips him off as well as the inner circle and the pinnacle uh, breaking the fourth wall, flipping off cameras every chance they possibly can. Sammy face first off of the cage. 
Dax face first off the cage now as well. So some back and forth competition with uh, the inner circle and the pinnacle here. But uh, we got a ways to go. This, you know, with TV time remaining, going to be, I would have to assume, almost a 45-minute, 10-hour match uh, for the main event here tonight on a uh, TV special for a uh, AEW pay-per-view. A blood and guts. Submit or surrender, says good old JR Jim Ross. Tony Schiavone, Excalibur on commentary. Cage is, in fact, locked. The only way to enter is when, uh, of course, the first five minutes are up and then they're going to let you in, I would assume, every few minutes then. Uh, afterwards, I'm sure they're going to put the uh, countdown ticker down in the bottom corner here eventually. But now, uh, Sammy back and forth with Dax Harwood just throwing him all over the place inside this blood and guts cage. Big clothesline then over the top rope as well. As they got a little bit of an extra hanging uh, barricade uh, in between the. Uh, rings in the middle and then of course on the sides as well to make it make it level make it all even uh countdown clock is now officially up as well so 30 seconds and counting now actually uh, down to 10 so 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 pinnacle gonna have a two-on-one advantage here here comes the chairman himself sean spears as uh, we just counted down, actually counted up to 10 from 1 to 10, and then also just counted down from 10 to 1, so the perfect 10 in this match, and yes, I do know how to count. Uh, of course, 1 to 10, forwards, and then backwards down to 0 2, if you did not know. Hopefully you're enjoying. Thank you for listening. Uh, Sheer, Sean Spears, though, with his, uh, not his uh, shears, his chair, um, but uh, right before he actually got in the match, Sammy hit a uh, neckbreaker on Dax as he's really busted open now, um, bleeding all over the place. And he's wearing white trunks. They're all wearing white. Pinnacles is wearing white and Inner Circle wearing all black. Spears actually with a chair shot right to the head of Sammy Guevara uh, with uh, that chair actually being black, white, and red as well. So... Um, Inner Circle will make it even here in a few minutes at two apiece, but um, Spears actually, I noticed, dyed his hair back to black. Uh, no more blonde mohawk for him. But, um, yeah, formerly known, of course, as Perfect Ten. Three former with Simon Guevara in the mix as well, WWE guys. We'll see if Peyton Royce, Billy Kay come over make AEW more iconic than it already is or not. Five, four, three, two, one. Who's going to come enter for the inner circle? Santana and Ortiz. Ortiz with a steel chair. Throws that to Spears. Throws him down. And then working Dax Harwood. Big clothesline to him. Sean Spears. Just got hit with another steel chair, as did Dax Harwood. So back and forth here until we get five apiece. This should be a good match, hopefully. I mean, they've, for the most part... I mean, of course, yeah, okay, they had... Or supposed to have, I should say, um, elite inner circle last year and couldn't. Now we here are a year later. It's inner circle and pinnacle. Uh, Gavar and Spears off the ropes. Commercial break now. Dax ripping the shirt off of Ortiz. But I mean, they. What I'm getting at is here is, for the most part, they've. Uh, done a pretty good job of hyping this event up, building it, building towards it, and then um, everything, and Sammy just hit a botch there, uh, tripping off the top rope to take out Dax, but we 
fell on his face. Ortiz on his feet working Sean Spears here. So we're getting into double or nothing now. Of course, we had an announcement or two earlier. I guess we're going to have another one next week. So, hey, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, AEW's been around now for a few years, but um, age like a fine wine sometimes. So, here comes, who's that, Cash Wheeler. Okay, Cash is now in this match of the Pinnacle. So, Pinnacle with a three-on-two advantage. He goes right after everyone in the corner and then a big clothesline. Now FTR going to work together as it's FTR and Sean Spears, Telly Blanchard's 3-4 uh, horsemen. And then a uh, nice vertical suplex off the top rope with an, a little assist there from FTR. Spears throwing Guevara into the cage. So Santana's ringside as, um, who's that, Cash Wheeler, yeah, Cash and Dax always get those two mixed up for some reason, even though one has hair and one doesn't. Um, Cash was just rubbing Ortiz's face into the cage and Santana's ringside not being able to do anything about it. So Pinnacle for the time being, through and two advantage here in blood and guts. No commercial breaks yet, uh, which is a bit of a surprise. I thought by now... Um, you know, especially with not the official match uh, underway, that we would have had at least one commercial break, whether it had been a full-blown commercial break or not, or a split screen at that, you know, bit of surprise. Uh, Sammy actually just, um, or Sammy's in a sharpshooter in the middle of the ring uh, via Sean Spears as uh, Ortiz, uh fell down in between the ring and the cage. Now here comes Santana, so we're back to three apiece. We got uh, Sammy Guevara, Santana and Ortiz of the inner circle, along with FTR and Sean Spears of the pinnacle. So Hager and Wardlow, along with Jericho and MJF, still to enter to make it a five-on-five full-blown official AEW Blood and Guts match here uh, in a matter of minutes, so stay tuned. But back and forth. It seems like whoever, of course, nice uh, back body drop there. Whoever's entering, they'll get a uh, advantage here for a second or two before before it settles, and then they'll back and forth some more. Well, I'll speak the devil. Split screen commercial live on hashtag AEW Dynamite when you share this Reaction stream on social media. Hashtag blood and guts as well. Chat questions and comments. Super chats. Super stickers. Always greatly appreciated. Drop those below. Hopefully tune in for WWE WrestleMania Backlash in uh, about a week and a half or so now. Uh, live right here on YouTube as well. But um, split screen commercial. Uh, but we can still see the action in the corner. Sean Spears is working Guevara. Uh, the chairman himself of AEW. That's sort of been his gimmick since he entered the uh, company, but with Tully managing him and then FTR, um, especially since last summer when FTR was brought in, Spears was on the outside looking in, and then they, as mentioned, sort of wrapped it up and uh, closed that loophole and put them all together in MJF's new faction here, otherwise known as the Pinnacle. Five seconds Four, three, two, one. Who's going to enter next? It should be Wardlow, Pinnacle, and it is. So they open the cage door for him. Here comes Wardlow, who really all is, in my opinion at least, just been MJF's bodyguard um, since he's been signed to AEW. They really haven't done a whole lot with him. Um, I mean, future's bright for everyone, of course, but eventually, you know, something's got to give, like... And I always, you know, revert back to the booking. Um, more so than not with the WWE compared to AEW because AEW is still so fresh. It's still so brand new, even though it's, you know, been around for a few years. Um, I mean, I get you got to, whether it's long-term or uh, short-term booking, um, over, over time, yeah, it'll all fizzle out and 
dust will settle and hey whoever's on top standing tall okay but it's like some things you do as we get iced tea and stone cold for tide um you know some things it's like what the hell are you doing you know and i've said that for both companies but more so not the WWE. but i always just refer back uh to the booking because that's where it all starts because if the booking isn't good or the booking as we know could be 10 times better show could be 10 times better you don't have to worry about the so-called ratings that everyone's worried about but um yeah split screen commercial here now back to the action with another countdown clock 10 actually they take that off for a second so they're going to give uh pinnacle with a four and three advantage just a little bit more time with wardlow picking up sammy Guevara and throwing him in the cage he now holds his right knee uh hager going to come in eight seven six five four three two one and once more yes i can in fact count from one to ten back on down to zero no my abcs as well hopefully you do too hager in the match uh working ftr actually moved out of the way and hit hit themselves in the corner and then hager to spears with a big clothesline also to uh dax and cash in the corners as well big boot and now uh, right hand before hager and wardlow are going to stare each other down it looks like as one's in one ring the other's in the other ring so spears tapping out to this lock ankle lock by uh hager so yeah now of course they stare each other down um and then Hager draws the line in the sand. Wardlow going to leave his ring, enter the Inner Circle's ring. Uh, TV-wise, Inner Circle's on the right, Pinnacle's on the left. If you can vision that in these two rings in this one cage. Um, Pinnacle, as mentioned, in all white. Inner Circle, as mentioned, in all black with uh, Houtsdale Prison written on the back of these jumpsuits big right hand there by Wardlow and then some reversals by both Wardlow and Hager with some rights and lefts and some knees to the gut as well now a headlock but now here comes MJF seven seconds and counting um and then it'll be Jericho, and then we'll be blood and guts. All hell's about to break loose here in a few minutes or so. So MJF legal in the match goes right after Santana and Ortiz in the corner. Sammy Guevara as well, as Wardlow and Hager continue to work each other in the other ring. Everyone else that's currently in this match is in this other ring on the left side. And then, uh, well, as the crowd chance asshole we got some asshole chance for mjf hager flips him off wardlow with a chop block to the back of the left knee in the meantime and then mjf gets up in the corner does his pose gonna kiss his diamond once more tells jericho hey when you come in here, you're a dead man. You hear me? You're a dead man. Be sure to, as well, vote on today's question of the day poll on social media. Who will win tonight's very first ever blood and guts match on AEW Dynamite with the Inner Circle and Pinnacle? Now, as uh, Dax was busted open, Cash Wheeler's also bloody as all hell, so... It is blood and guts. This is a TV. I mean, we're past 9 o'clock, though, so who really cares? I mean, who really cares to begin with? But it's not a pay-per-view. Normally, you would see at least this amount on a, on a show like that, not a TV special. But it is blood and guts. You have to make um, an impact. You have to make, as Jericho enters, now Bell's going to ring. Blood and Guts going to be officially underway. Bell does, in fact, ring. Inner Circle in their ring. Pinnacle in their ring. And all hell's about to break loose here in a second. They're going to go at it. 
charge. Tully Blanchard still ringside, which is just odd, but looks like Whitey Bulger and his all white tracksuit. But to make a start, you gotta uh, make a name for yourself. So you gotta give people to tune in and watch. Wardlow with a little bit of a botch there, trying to jump over the middle rope into the other ring when they uh, charged each other as this is a battle on a May Wednesday night. Jericho with Floyd is bat. It is baseball season. Baseball bat right to the back of Sean Spears. Spears going to climb to the top of the cage. Climb this scaffolding. Jericho falling. What the hell is going to happen here? Is he going to lock his head in that? That's what it looks like. And then he just like poked him in the ear. Now he's beating his head in from behind. And then Spears with a kick to Jericho. Lands on his feet though. And all out assault will continue in pitcher and pitcher. Thank you, Excalibur. We're going to head to another commercial break. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. Why did they do these two split screens uh, before the match officially began? And then once it's 5 on 5, you stay live until the end of the show. But, oh well, this is what they're doing. we got to live with it one way or another. That's the other thing. You know, we can bitch and complain all we want. Hey, this isn't good. This should be better. They should do this. Blah, 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 blah. I, I'm as bad as anyone else, so I shouldn't be talking about it. But still, you know, like they're still going to do what they want. And they all know we're still going to watch, so that's why they do it. Regardless of the company. More so than not uh, the one uh, in New York City. But, um... It's a business, you know? You got to do what you got to do sometimes, especially in times like this, especially the past year. So, split screen here. We're live. Inner circle. Pinnacle. AW blood and guts. Jericho with... Who is that? MJF? It looks like him. So they're the leaders of the pack, if you will. Uh, MJF, formerly known, or formerly in, I should say, the inner circle before he turned uh, and then formed his own group in the Pinnacle. And, you know, hence, that's why we have this match now tonight. And, uh, we see some highlights for AEW Dynamite. Hell, that golf cart incident was about a year ago. And then Fight for the Fall and the uh, um, Orange Juice from Orange Cassidy being dumped on Jericho last summer. That's the AEW Dynamite Arena. All right. Uh, now a full-blown commercial break, so they take the split screen off, and we'll get back to the action here in a second. We actually can't even see anything at all other than this current uh, commercial that's airing. So blood and guts to return here hopefully soon. I would have to say we're about towards the end um, you know another 15 or 20 minutes or so I'd say um, and then they'll wrap it up but um, hey we'll see what happens here something's got to give so we'll see what does here moving forward but uh, once more thank you for tuning in and listening AW Dynamite Blood and Guts live right here on YouTube this will in fact be uploaded uh, hopefully by the end of the week uh, as well, Saturday, um, maybe the Sunday on Mother's Day. Shout out to all the moms out there as well. Um, very busy week uh, this week uh, for myself. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, that's why I'm running a little bit behind. That's why we just uh, ended up sitting down and uh, doing an audio-only version here tonight and then recap the first hour and then this blood and guts 45 minutes an hour or so main event for the show this evening so now back uh from commercial break but yes thank you for tuning in and listening but yeah hopefully it'll be uploaded by the end of the week or at the earliest early next week but 
Um, back from commercial, uh, they actually ripped up the one corner of the ring, so that's why they took out the split screen, I would assume, uh, just so they could cut that up so it didn't get on TV. Uh, they actually have ripped apart uh, as Jericho hits a code breaker. Uh, Sammy with a drop kick to Spears as well. Hager and Warcliffe still working each other. So the big men are working each other. The tag teams are working each other. Um, and then, I mean, Jericho and MJF sort of. But then Spears with the Guevara, I guess you could say too. Um, you know, they're all, and Sammy going up top, there's a steel chair, what's he going to do, a Shane McMahon coast to coast, yeah, coast to coast hits, wonder where he got that from, but, uh, yeah, they, they ripped the ring up in the corner, ripped some of the padding up. Steel chair for Hager. They're going to share a replay of the Coast to Coast. And that was actually a damn good move, too. He actually hit that in stride, full-blown. They've actually ripped up uh, the uh, turnbuckle as well. So Jericho with that turnbuckle uh, right to Cash Wheeler, I do believe. Yeah, so Jericho, MJF, uh, Sammy and Spears, and then the tag teams with FTR and Santana and Ortiz, and then, yeah, Hager and Wardlow as well. What does Santana have? Is that a fork? It's some sort of silverware. Looks like a fork or a spoon. Might even be a spork, for all we know. Inner circle chance. Pinnacle asshole chance for MJF. This is awesome, I would have to assume as well. Yes, yeah, so that was some sort of silverware. As MJF's actually busted open now as well. Hager's bleeding a little bit too, but it seems to me the Pinnacles, um, more so than not, the ones that are bleeding the most out of anybody in this match. Uh, Jericho now with Floyd as baseball bat and a submission on Wardlow. And then Centeno and Ortiz continuing to beat down MJF. Got a few officials, plus Tully Blanchard, as mentioned, ringside. A dub chance now as well. And then Jericho kisses his wrist and punches MJF. Right in the face. Didn't knock him out like Mike Tyson, but... Did I say wrist? I meant fist. And that, of course, just copying MJF's kissing of the dynamite diamond that he always wears since he's won that. That'll be the next... Uh, not major thing that they'll do, but they normally do that towards late summer, early fall, if I'm not mistaken, to whoever they have win it, you know, potentially get a little bit of a boost, uh, you know, in their booking and their stories, um, you know, push them, not to the top necessarily, depending on where they're at in the card, but MJF was, of course, the first winner of that diamond, diamond so uh, that's why, and it has elevated his character his career as mentioned earlier in my opinion he's one of the best if not the best um heels in all pro wrestling right now another botch with uh, hager and wardlow and then a steel chair shot to the gut to take down wardlow so and then a steel chair shot right to the head as well big clothesline too so a few botches but for the most part of this match has been pretty damn good in my opinion inner circle standing tall though right now however match not officially over yet somebody Whoever, you know, is going to come out uh, on the losing side of things as we had another split screen commercial break right now. The uh, winners are going to have to make the losers either submit or surrender. So if you submit, okay, you're going to tap out. Uh, you surrender, you're going to yell, hey, I quit, I surrender, basically. Um, 
So, no DQ, no holds barred, all that, wrapped up in the one. Uh, anything goes. It's, you know, a cage, hell in a cell match, war games, blood and guts, however you want to put it. It's pro wrestling. It, anything goes right now. So, it's exciting to tune in and watch weekly. In my opinion, at least it is. I've been watching wrestling for I don't know how long now. And, you know, like I said, we can complain all we want, but we know, as they do, we're still going to watch it, regardless of how bad it is. But this is pretty damn good. We'll have to see what uh, other people are thinking, saying about it. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts. But uh, we should be hitting the... Or we should be on right now the final commercial break of the night. And we should be hitting the uh, finish here momentarily. And then that'll do it for uh, AEW Dynamite with Blood and Guts this evening. Tully Blanchard actually throwing uh, an official. That's Bryce Remsburg. Not in his hazmat suit, though, tonight. Throwing him uh, into the barricade ringside. And then Tully going to try to open the cage door to uh, allow MJF to exit. Okay, so it's not like a cage match that you exit the cage you win even though he's technically outside now Jericho gonna fall they're gonna climb to the top of this blood and guts cage Tully Blanchard trying to make sure uh, Jericho doesn't exit but Jericho slams him back Tully goes flying we'll see what happens with Tessa Blanchard moving forward but um, MJF now on the top of this blood and guts cage Jericho to follow as mentioned hopefully coming out of this split screen commercial break in a few seconds as well, but um, hashtag AW Dynamite, hashtag Blood and Guts. So what are they going to do? Relive uh, Undertaker throwing Mankind off the cage with Jericho throwing MJF, or MJF throwing Jericho off the cage or through the uh, cage, just Blood and Guts, two ring, one cage, uh, choke slamming him through it to the bottom. We'll see. So, Jericho just holding on to the scaffolding for the time being. I think he's waiting to get a cue to, hey, we're back live from commercial break. Like, go, 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 go. And, uh, yeah. Okay, we're back. He's going to continue to climb in the meantime. MJF just laying up there by himself. But, uh, inner circle, pinnacle, AW. Blood and Guts main event finish in the works. What's going to happen on this top of this Blood and Guts cage? That's my question right now. Jericho now up there with MJF walking over towards him staring him down. MJF pleading for his life. Jericho with a kick going to put him in a Walls of Jericho. MJF taps. Technically, since we're legal now, this match is official. Inner Circle wins. Because Inner Circle with Jericho would make uh, MJF and the Pinnacle submit with the tap out. Submit or surrender. Only way to win. And then a low blow from behind. A punch right to the sack from MJF to Chris Jericho. So Jericho on his knees. MJF now going to put Jericho in an arm bar. So they got a nice aerial shot from up above in that bird's nest. I don't really think a whole lot's going on down below. Because they're not showing anything. I don't think anybody's wrestling. I think they're all taking a little bit of a break right now while MJF and Jericho are working each other up on the uh, top of this blood and guts cage. Stomp right the hand, the left hand of Chris Jericho. And then MJF uh, slam that arm down a few times as well. Booze for MJF. More asshole chance as well. And now he's going to bite the left forearm. Give Chris Jericho a new tattoo on that left arm of his. Some bite marks. Jericho taps out here. 
Inner circle loses. Jericho's not going to tap. They're not going to have somebody submit to lose this match. Whoever's going to lose is going to say, I quit, I surrender. That's how it's going to end. MJF stares down the camera. Blood and all on his face. They pan back to the rings down below. Everyone just down and out, laying all over the place. MJF with that dynamite diamond. Big right hand to Chris Jericho. And then he celebrates some. Pumps his chest. They're working towards the center of the top of the cage. So is something going to happen in the middle or off to the side? Maybe we'll see. Jericho laying down. MJF actually walks over towards the side now. Stares down below. What's he looking at? Somebody standing there? And then MJF has this sinister look on his face now. Shitty little grin. Gonna pick up Jericho from behind. Drags Chris Jericho over. MJF yelling down below. If you don't surrender, I'm throwing him off the top. And then the inner circle from inside and outside trying to get to the top. MJF say, I'm going to do it. And bell rings. The inner circle has surrendered. Pinnacle with the win. The pinnacle defeats the inner circle in the first ever AEW Blood and Guts match. MJF's still going to throw Jericho off this top. No doubt. Playing mind games. One upping them. Hey, I'm going to do this unless you do this. Pinnacle with the win. Yeah, MJF telling their circle. And then they cut to Jericho. Jericho's telling them something. That's going to be all over the place. That wasn't a good look right there. Hey, wait a few seconds, then do whatever you're going to do. Okay, he basically told him, hey, like, stare down the camera, get some reaction from the crowd. But yeah, MJF telling your circle, I'm going to throw him off unless you surrender. They surrender, and now here he is about to throw him off anyway. And he's just going to shove Chris Jericho off the top of the blood and guts cage through some type of built-in platform on the entrance that they, of course, built. Uh, for this Blood and Guts event tonight. There's uh, the rest of the inner circle coming to the aid of Chris Jericho now. And uh, a replay of this from the side now. Nice side view. Uh, yeah, that was right in the middle of the entrance in between, uh, like basically right on the stage in between the, the two tunnels that they have for AW Dynamite and now uh, they got some medical personnel uh, next to Chris Jericho checking in on him of course he's alright he'll be fine and then uh, MJF yells down thank you to Chris Jericho as MJF and the Pinnacle defeat the inner circle here tonight in the main event of AW Dynamite in the very first ever AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts match. Very, very good match, I thought. Jericho taking a big bump, though, off the top of the cage. It wasn't that bad, honestly. It wasn't even that far of a fall, but he's selling it. That's all they want. Pinnacle getting more heel heat. MJF more so than not. And... With Kenny Omega as world champion. Of course, their heels right now, though, too. You could go face-face. You could go heel-to-heel. Doesn't matter. At some point in time or another, MJF needs to challenge Kenny Omega for the AW World Heavyweight Championship and defeat the cleaner to become what? He would be the fourth ever at that point in time AW. World Heavyweight Champion, unless Omega drops to somebody else in the meantime. 
So they're checking in on Jericho ringside. Music hits. MJF standing tall. Just walking around now. Trying to buy some time here. As we've got a few minutes left. Before they're going to close credit. And uh, get into with whatever's to come next on TNT. But a big moment for MJF and the Pinnacle tonight on Dynamite. No doubt about it. MJF now going to try to exit the top of the cage. He's actually just sitting there. He points to the side of his head. Hey, think. You know, everyone knows that meme. You know what I'm talking about. Hope Jericho can recover. And when he does, of course, you would have to think, yeah, Jericho uh, and the inner circle going to retaliate to get more blood and guts, if you will. On the pinnacle. And uh, to close it, MJF going to stare down the camera. Stare down Chris Jericho as well. And uh, hey, it's Wednesday night. You know what that means. That'll do it for Dynamite. In the very first ever Blood and Guts match. So as we come up uh, here on an hour or so. Uh, with this uh, audio-only recording for Live Reactions Plug Play. Uh, shorter than usual, of course, as mentioned, just because, of course, if you've listened the whole way through, you already know. Uh, but a little behind schedule here tonight. We recapped with what happened in the first hour, and then, yeah, I'd say almost a 45-minute main event match. TV time remaining there. Uh, a few commercial breaks then, uh, about midway through the match. Uh, and then they did everything that you know you would think you would normally see in a in a match like this um as it was one-on-one and then two-on-one for the pinnacle and then even again and then they had the advantage one up until the bell officially rang and the match became official with jericho entering last as mgf did as well for his team five on five blood and guts all hell breaks loose and they go until the end. They go until they finish it up. And uh, very, very good match, I thought. Very, very good show tonight. Um, from you know what I saw there, the first hour or so. But um, blood and guts now in the books. I would have to assume this is going to be, you know, a staple moving forward as a TV special, if you will. Um, as AEW has done a very damn good job of. Uh, booking those of course uh, the beach break the blood and guts here I mean they had St. Patrick's Day slam last uh, month or so two months ago now actually as we're into early May now just because St. Patty's Day was on a Wednesday uh, this year Um, blood and guts of course uh, fighter fest fight for the fallen Uh, it seems to me they're going to have crossroads uh, for the go homes for pay per views as well, plus their big four pay per views that they have. So um, we're on the road to double or nothing. That'll be coming up uh, on May the 30th. AW rolling with Sunday pay per views moving forward, uh, as uh, WWE uh, is as well with uh, NXT and the main roster. But um, we'll see what the future holds moving forward uh, with AEW. Um, and who Kenny Omega is going to defend his title against a double or nothing, whether it be Pac or Orange Cassidy, maybe even Triple Threat, we'll see. Um, I would have to say Orange Cassidy. Um, and then next week we've got a few title matches, as mentioned earlier, um, with uh, the Young Bucks and SCU. Uh, seems to be Darby and Miro as well for the TNT title, so we'll see if they make that official or not. Um, Moxley in the IWGP. New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Championship title defense as well. Britt Baker, double or nothing. Finally, finally, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, getting a uh, women's championship match as well and a match that she should win. Hopefully she will. We'll see. How many times going to tell here over the next few weeks or so. But, uh, yeah, that's AEW Dynamite in a nutshell for, I mean, the big key main moments, I guess you could say. But, um for the most part, yeah, I've gone over everything, so that'll do it uh, for myself, your host, Encyclopedia Sports, uh, this evening live right here on YouTube for 
some AEW Dynamite live reactions, play play live watch along reaction stream live right here on YouTube with uh, blood and guts with the inner circle and the pinnacle with the ladder of MJF and the pinnacle uh, making the inner circle surrender, picking up the win before MJF threw Chris Jericho off of the top of the blood and guts cage. So AW Dynamite blood and guts now. In the books, we're on the road to double or nothing with a crossroads, I would assume, as mentioned, the Wednesday prior. Be sure to keep an eye out for more videos right here on the channel. And once more, thanks for tuning in and listening. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of AW Dynamite Blood and Guts. And uh, be sure, as always, to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below.